Okay, you guys, get prepared for this one. I cannot find the other, uh, the remainder of that other one, Killing the Clones. But I happened upon this one. This one was in my save stuff, but I don't remember ever reading it. Um, it's freaking even worse than the other one. Anyway, it's anybody else see this um, odd Instagram account. And remember, that's the other one. It had that um, title on it, too, but I don't remember reading any of this. Anyway, it says, um, oh my god, look at what accounts the, the Instagram account follows. I clicked on five and they went straight to accounts with pictures of dead women. Oh my god, I seriously think you guys are on something. This Instagram person is so suspect. Has anyone heard anything about this on the news or told the, told the cops? Also, where, also, were those kill the clones things recently? I'm shook. This is fucked up. FR, fucking right. It's insane. This seems like it definitely needs to be checked out. It took I took screenshots of everything too. Too weird. Can you post any of the sus comments on on it? Because the page got deleted. I'm curious on what they were saying. What the fuck? Honestly, given the glorification of serial killers and mass shooters, and more and more people think they are actual lizard people who run the country, I would not be shocked if this small group of very disturbed young adults incel type question mark who did this. The question is, is all of this a symptom of sick people or a sick society? This could be it. The group they killed, the, the, the group they killed would be seen as Stacy's and Chad's and are what the incels hate the most. The popular beautiful people. They seem, they see them as stupid and less than, but they feel inferior to them in a societal sense. Serial killers are being glorified and I've seen countless young men try to look like Dahmer since the documentary on, De on Netflix and heard multiple people saying he is hot, etc. I think more and more people are losing their minds and the way things are going, it's a pretty scary world to be in, to live in. I looked at that video of, ki of killing the clones and it's the girl that actually gives me the weirdest vibes. But I read here, I kind of, but before I read here, I kind of dismissed it, but... If they are following them and all these weird accounts, then maybe it would make sense. They were filming as they were particularly messy, brutal killings. I can't see it as being a crime of passion as they killed all four of them. This is super creepy and disturbing. I'm getting an awful feeling about this. You need to be, you need, you have a right to be. The fact that those, these victims are linked to this IG account full of death type sadistic followers it's just too coincidental not to be connected they have the right folks in place to support the search for the killer I just hope they pick up on it you know this could have been added after the fact and just and just want to be a troll that is true but it's still a very disturbing video and these people should be looked into if they're not connected to this case exactly if you've posted if, you, if you're posting things like this, or even insinuating as such, and especially if you're trying to connect it to something very real, very sad, and very a very brutal murder, there's definitely something wrong there. Yep, just sent the Reddit forums into the... Fr yep, just sent... Just to send the Reddit forums into a frenzy. Same. It's a horror movie-ish chill. Getting chills just thinking about it. I can't fathom how... It, how it would be a crime of passion in killing four people. I feel like those type of murders are quick and messy. To go and kill again and again seems pretty premeditated to me. And if and if it was two people, etc., it how effed up is it to be both? Wait, how effed up is it to both be crazy? I mean, wouldn't it make sense for an account that follows creepy ass strangulation dead women accounts? To also follow the accounts of victims that were actually brutally murdered, it seems like more of a disgusting fascination than a than a direct connection. Um, let's see what this one says. Hundred <clears throat> percent. Think about how many deranged people exist in this world. Schools across across the country receive countless unsubstantial threats of violence a day because people are weird and do shit like this for attention. I'm laughing that people think they are going to solve this murder by looking at an Instagram account and fail to see the much more likely scenario. 
that some weirdo thinks it's funny and and is fucking with people like the ones commenting here. It's still worth reporting someone reporting someone like this to authorities. I was thinking something similar. Some people are straight up weird, sick and twisted, and have these weird fascinations with murders. Yeah, should be a reason enough to get them into a mental asylum. Uh, related to the case or not, we don't need these people on the streets. Check out this book, The Mask of Insanity. Will do. Yes. It doesn't make sense, but the part I can't wrap my mind around is, is how this account was already following Ethan, private account. He had to accept her follow request prior to the murders. It's weird as fuck. This is exactly, this is extremely deserving, disturbing. And the fact that the movie is presented same day, I think you're onto something. Anyone else notice they've deleted a lot of the posts uh, being screenshotted and posted on this Reddit? Eerily, eerie as hell. Yeah, police ha usually have a gag order when it comes to sat satanic abuse. That's weird. Just wanted to say thanks to all of the wonder wonderful, curious, brave, intel in. Wait, just wanted to say thanks to all of the wonderful, wonderful, curious, brave, intelligent, caring people on this site who expend their time and energy because they care. <laughs> this account follows a bunch of neck models. Oh, maybe I have this one, but this account follows a bunch of neck models. And there's one account that has a link for it. On the link, there's people choking them. There's on people choking themselves. Super weird. They also follow Franklin College. They follow some people who also attend that college. Kind of weird. I want to confirm that this info has been sent to the authorities. Thank you. Loading. Thank you, question mark, exclamation point. Is that a question or a statement? What in the world? That was insane. Insane that anyone would go through that effort to make a movie like that and freaking post it. Something isn't sitting right, especially if the, some trolls have that picture in common. I mean, that's wild. I have a very strong, intuitive vibe. This account is linked to the perp. If not the perp, holy shit. Following tons of weird-ass accounts, Plus, that YouTube video was creepy as shit. But I feel like if the perp wanted to stay hidden, why would they comment on the victim's posts, especially foul shit, and drag attention to themselves? Yeah, for what it's worth, some murderers have been known to give hints and clues for detectives to find them because they were proud of what they'd done and want people to know it was them. Yeah, that's a very valid point. I mean, they are certifiably fucked up. What's keeping them from doing fucked up things? This account is absolutely disturbing, and the following, and the following of consist, consisting, it's consisting not only of the victims and their friends, family, but a lot of incel leaning, violent towards women pages, and I am genuinely disturbed. Yeah, a lot of accounts devoted to asphyxiation. What's that? Strangulation. Come on, man, focus. Asphyxiation and strangulation are not the same thing. Strangulation is a method of asphyxiation. I don't think we need to get to semantics here, do we? Crazy that this needs to be clarified. Lord. So, there are so many great catches in these comments. I'm not from the U.S., but since the accounts are being deleted, please present all of this to the police. Remember how helpful social media was with Gabby Petito? Not sure if you guys saw this guy. He commented, Fuck Moscow, under a picture of Kaylee and her boyfriend 167 weeks ago. 167 weeks ago. Why is nobody talking about this anymore? The same profile the post is about? Which account? Was the picture 167 weeks old or the comment? Very different things. The comment. What guy? This was a deleted comment, by the way. I live in Utah, where it's very similar fashion culture to Idaho, and there are tons of girls who could fall into this category, along with Kaylee and Maddie, who are absolutely beautiful, but undeniably, undeniably similar. Platinum blonde, fake tan, eyelash extensions, etc. When I saw the picture from this post, I immediately made that connection. 
it's awful to think, but it's unfortunately not without reason to imagine some evil misogynistic motive behind it. That guy's from Colorado. Is that what he said? Did he say Utah? Okay. Well, did not you not see a uh, license plate from Utah, Montana, Colorado, or what did he say? What's the other one? Arizona. Okay. Looked up the profile on Instagram. It's odd, but the bio says she is 15. Is this a catfish? If you watch the YouTube video, the same girl with the feather tattoo is in the video and on the Instagram. I think this girl is real, but I doubt she is 15. She has multiple tattoos, ear gauges, and an upper nose piercing. Doesn't necessarily mean she can't be 15, but it's unlikely. The video appears to be taped in a large finished basement. Might be her parents or a friend's parents' house. Hmm, that seems weird. Or an empty apartment that somebody owns, I'm thinking. Or, oh, I don't even want to say it. Okay, that's just me saying this part. Uh, yeah, I, or an appearance house. Uh, I'd say so. I was thinking someone could reverse image photo, search the photos of the girl to see if they appear elsewhere online and would prove it's, there is likely a catfish. I'm sure it is. The account follows Ethan's brother as well. I'm not sure what what everyone is getting at. It appears to be a burner account designed to get all of us to look at some very questionable and desirable accounts. I didn't see the comments it left, but when you look at the other accounts that it follow, the account follows, it makes you want to immediately disassociate from the platform, much less the page. Right? It's sick. As sick as it is, it is a bit of a decent way of marketing a stupid ass movie you are trying to get eyes on. Are the posts prior to the murders or posted after? I haven't looked at the page, but I'm curious if this just if this just someone wanting attention and only starting a post posting after. So this account follows so many people attending, associating with the University of Idaho major red flags. Wow. Check out the Moscow Slayer on Instagram. Spooky man. Please tell me this was given as a tip. I reposted this in our Moscow, Moscow Murders, and there was someone who said they were reporting it. Okay, well, you guys, we're going to have to go back to that one because that might be the one that I was reading before, but I don't know. So we'll just continue down this little rabbit hole for a minute. Any updates? No, no updates. IG account keeps changing its name. Oh, that's Okay, that's probably why, you guys. Keeps changing its name. Probably just some loser. Oh, no, that's the other account. Wait, were they talking about this one or that one? Oh, the IG. Never mind. <laughs> Strike that. <laughs> you guys probably don't know if it's me talking or if it's me talking to, through them or whatever. Okay, IG account keeps changing its name. Probably just some loser. You never know, though. Gladly, it's been reported to ISP. Wow, very disturbing. It really might be connected. I personally can't at the moment, but anyone who can, sh who can should screenshot the heck out of that and report it to police. Please post this on our Moscow murders. Just posted it. This is so ducking weird. Good God. Did you report it? Wow, so odd. Some people do weird shit for attention, but this is just disturbing. This account is following Hunter, Ethan's brother. Has anyone else noticed this? You guys, that is weird. Y'all out here putting in more hours in the force. I wish you were around for my papa's murder investigation. It would have been probably been probably would have been solved quicker than ten years. I also think people are making some of these accounts just to mess with the Reddit detectives too. Let's not disrespect the force. They're doing all they can with actual evidence. We're just regular people on a social on social media. Also, they have like forty five investigators on this from what I heard, and they're and they're most certainly doing everything they can. Uh, well, I, w it, I wasn't all at all disrespectful to these investigators. I'm sure they are doing all they can, but I absolutely can't criticize the investigators who took dogs out to out to search for my papa. Got a got a hit on a shed and said, nah, I'll deal with it next week. I'm taking vacation tomorrow. And then proceeded to not only not answer phone calls, but not return one single phone call within call in 10 years, causing my papa's murder to go unsolved for 10 years out of sheer laziness. It wasn't until we got a new sheriff and a new homicide investigator that we got, that we got any answers at all. 
It wasn't because my family was problematic. My mother is as polite as they come and was too lenient on the detectives. He just didn't care about an elderly veteran being murdered. My comment about Moscow was made in a joking fashion as a testament to how hard these people out here out here hurt. It's la la la. Manner is a testament to how hard these people out here get involved in these cases. Kind of reminds me of the Delph Adelphi in Indiana case all over again with the sleuth thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing either. It just surprises me to see how invested people become. Yeah, well, this feels disturbing. And yeah, if there if there is anywhere to submit tips online, I'll do it for sure. Long shot, but I it could unravel something. This video. In this video, there are knives hanging on walls, similar to what the murder weapon could be. I can't believe they actually saw this this video. I mean, the other one, I don't think there was people there. I mean, there's a few people, but, okay, it's me talking right now. But I didn't talk about ones like this. Are all those accounts gone? I can't find the Jack or, I can't find the Jack or Sarah one. Uh, they are still live, but I have, but have deleted many of the posts that were uh, screenshotted and post it on this thread. They're deleted now. Same with the YouTube video. Interesting. Maybe just a terrible coincidence. Was that video up uploaded to YouTube the same day of the murders? Day after the murders. What the actual fuck? I bet it's pot I bet it's probably some fifty year old perv or something disgusting. Uh, maybe someone was videoing it for videoing it for a movie. Did you see they have now removed the Kill the Clones movie? The Moscow Slayer Instagram account said it doesn't exist anymore. It's just what I'm seeing, and is everyone seeing it too? His name is his name doesn't pop up anymore. The YouTube channel, the YouTube movie has been removed. Yes, this is really fucking freaky. Unsurprisingly taken down. If you have a lead a lead suspect, inform the authorities. Perhaps instead of sharing it with everyone. This is more and more. This, this and much more that was not publicly posted was shared with the authorities by several people, including myself, the day the post was made. Screenshots provided as well as a download of the video. Wow, you guys. That means the freaking Moscow Police Department have that fucking video. How come they have not brought it up? I want to know that. I want to know that information. Do you guys want to know? Well, this is going to be on video, so I'll have it. Screenshots provided as well as download of the video. Perhaps don't assume so much in the future. Well, I'm assuming now, man, because we haven't heard nothing about that. And not only that, but didn't they come on come on and say, uh, stick to the, um, to the evidence, to the facts, like that we're the ones, we're the ones giving you, only listen to us, right? Well, how, they haven't told us about this, have they? Thank you for doing that. All this drags, all this dra as this drags on, it seems like there are no leads. There are no leads. This Instagram, YouTube video really makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm not sure why this angle has not been discussed much. The fact that that the posting of creepy messages began much before the date of the murders. The posting of the video was on November 12th. The interaction with the victim's Instagram was that fast, and it and it stopped shortly after the murders. I don't think the newer Instagram trolls account are related. Do, do make contribute to making a plausible case that the owner of that Instagram or, that the owner of that account is re responsible. Too many coincidences. Does anyone see the video? Did it, anyone see the video? I would like to see it, but I have not been able to find it. Good thing the internet is forever. Alright, you guys, I don't know if I... If that was the end of this one, let me see. Must have been the end of this one. So hold, hold your eyeballs, I'm gonna scroll up here and see if it dropped down anything when I got there. Okay, it did start off getting in his room. Wow, that was weird because it went all the way back to the top. That was odd. Just to add to this, as it may be, it may be linked. Have you all seen the video on TikTok where someone is videoing the area at night, and there is a party going on in the area? 
this the, this video was supposedly taken after the murders and in the video you can hear someone saying you're the murderer and and it seems as if they are celebrating the party seems to be very close to the house due to the loudness and it's also very strange people would be partying right after such a horrific tragedy happening to, so close to them so many weirdly coincidental coincidental things here is the tiktok link oh you guys should be click on it what the fuck is wrong with people I saw it too. Someone commented that it's Queen Road. Does anyone know how to reverse image search on some of the earlier photos of the girl posted in this account? Curious if someone is using the photos to pose as a 15 year old girl. I'd, I'd guess there's the, I'd guess that's the case. And seeing if they were somewhere, seeing if they were elsewhere on the internet would lend credibility to that thought. Several sites would do this. Try reverse image search in any search bar. Google is the easiest. Go to your Google accounts on Chrome Engine. On Chrome Engine is the easiest way. There's a picture of a camera and at, at the end of the search search prompt, use the picture you saved on your camera roll and it will reverse search. Does it, did anyone report this? The sheriff said last night if anyone knew of something of interest in Hives to contact them. Uh, yeah, has JS been reported for what was found on his mom's Facebook? LOL, I just don't want this to come across as silly. Uh, it has been removed now. Oh, wow, you guys. This video has been removed by the user. I also feel I know how scientific, unscientific gut feeling, yet so underestimated the killer is a girl. Because of the personal fit of vengeful rage component and the victimology, they were all pretty, popular, successful, cool, and Killer was probably not a family member. Jealous, jealousy could be a strong motive. They should look into left or right-handed. Uh, they should look into left or right-handed. Oh, that's a good idea. Damn, that's a really good idea, you guys. Wow. The knife could be stolen or recently. That, that is such a good idea, you guys. I can't even believe that no one has ever said that before. Or maybe they have, but I didn't hear them. The knife could be stolen or recently bought at a pawn shop, antiques, hardware stores, uh, Walmart, you know. Okay, maybe not Walmart, but FB Marketplace, etc. Taken from a sibling, close but not too close, like he, she, they, question mark, LOL. Knew the place, but didn't know it had a basement? Sounds like, spatically, less informed or less observant. Size of shoe, question mark. Any long hairs? that are clearly not blonde. Three out of four victims of violent female offenders were women. Violent offenders most often victimized persons of the same gender. Male offenders were more likely than female offenders, 28% to 15%, to have used a weapon such as a blunt object, knife, or a firearm in the commission of a violent offense. She might have, been, might have slipped there, or she might have slipped here between 1976 and 1997 Juveniles accounted for just about 6% of the murders committed by female, offend by female offenders, or approximately 4,000 murders. In 1976, in 1976, there were an estimated 226 juvenile female murderers, compared to the estimated 153 in 1997. The only group of women for whom the rate of murder offended, offending has not continued to decrease are those of the age 18 to 24. The per capita rate of committing murder for women of this age reached its lowest point in 1995 and by 1997 had climbed to 25%. Some old interesting sta uh, statistics. And then there's a, there's a link here. So um, I couldn't find the most recent equivalent, equivalent document. I might go back to that. <sighs> reminding, myself, reminding myself to revisit this thread, the resemblance is uncanny. Did she make did she make her profile private? Also the video is gone. Uh, let's not let's, let's not let this theory die. It seems very strange to not be something of importance. Okay, you guys. So this I just ran across these pictures in my freaking I just ran across all these pictures. And I didn't know what they were from. I cannot believe I have this. Oh my god, that's so weird. I will show you guys, um, 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 give me a minute. Okay, you guys, these are some of the photos. So, 
like I said, I was going through my, trying to organize my um, categories in my, um, all my screenshots. Because, I mean, I, okay, so here's the thing. is when I need more room, and there's all these screenshots, I'll just, and I need room, like, now, I'll take all, the, I'll click on all the screenshots, and there's, like, I don't know, 17,000 in one, or maybe, I mean, maybe a little less than that. But anyway, I've got several different ones of screenshots. And then I'll just put on there the newest ones that I, that I moved over, or whatever, just so that I know the newest ones that I need to go through, right? Does that make sense? Anyway, it, it, um, it gives me a lot more room all of a sudden, you know, really fast. And so this, I've been going through those because I'm still trying to find that 911 call from the, and I know I have it somewhere. And, oh God, wouldn't that be awesome to get that? Jeez. I mean, I, I don't know. I have not heard anybody else talk about that except for me. I don't know anybody else who's ever even mentioned it. So, uh, I better not say that out loud too much, huh? Anyway, this, these are some of the ones in those screenshots that I've been going through and I moved all these um, these particular ones right here to a certain account or a certain um, it's t titled you know and this is one of them okay Saeed we're talking about him being in Banfield right he was in he was the one walking across allegedly he had been up at Matt's house party that's what he told the officer and that was at 2.53, or a little bit after, because they pulled him over at 2, um, they, they, they put, the cops turned around at 2.53, they started the cam at 2.53, okay, so maybe five minutes later, not even, not even five minutes, they were talking to Saeed. So, he paid David at 2.13 a.m. on the 13th. David Barry, he paid, he paid Barry. G. Is that a gram? Does that mean a gram? A gun? Um, what does it mean? Don't know. But that is so weird that I, I can't even believe. This is, this is, like I said, you guys, this is the kind of shit that happens to me. Is I just found, I've never, I don't think I've never, I don't remember ever reading this particular Reddit before. But, uh, you know, and right after I move these pictures around, this is just bizarre. Okay, on to the next one. Now, this one you cannot see very well. Um, I'll have to make, see if I can make it better. But, and I don't know where this, I, I don't know where any of these came from. What's interesting to me is the watch guard. So, these officers were driving around in an unmarked vehicle in plain clothes. Four alcohol offenses, one street from a massacre. So, this is... So it's retracted. This must be the the, uh, the actual report for the. So it gives their names. Why are they called watch guard? What is this? Narrative, general narrative outline. Number one, offense. Number two, twenty three six zero four, minor in consumption. Synopsis slash PC. So they got the names Taylor. No, there's no last name Peter. No last name um, Ethan. Were cited and released for minor in consumption. All three were cooperative and honest during the contact. How do they know they were honest? Total property value, damage stolen, nothing. No. Watch no, number four. Watch guard. Watch guard event. What's that say? B. D S W C. I don't know what it says. Additional. Responding officers. Tisdale. Case. Why? Where's Where's Rosendahl? Responding officers. Tisdale. Case number added to. Uh, WG TEA like for Tisdale or TES number one evidence no narrative on 11 13 22 at around 2 50 hours officer Tisdale and I oh this oh so Rosendahl wrote this up were working in plain clothes alcohol enforcement emphasis on U of I campus 
we were mobile as in an unmarked uh, police vehicle in the 700 block of West Taylor Avenue. I observed three males walking. Sorry for the back and forth, but I have to be big in order to see it. Walking males appearing under the age of 21. They swayed from side to side as they walked. They did not. And used each other for support. Oh, crap, you guys. One man fell down as he walked across Taylor Avenue. Did you see any of those guys fall down, you guys? I certainly didn't. Officer Tisdale and I contacted these three males and identified ourselves as police officers. Taylor, blank, 18, Peter... 19 and Ethan 19 were identified and their ages were confirmed through dispatch. All three were under uh, 21. I asked how many they had to drink. All three said between six and eight beers. Well, after they coerced them to say that, uh, eight beers, their speech was slow and slurred. As I spoke to them, I could smell the strong. Uh, some whatever strong odor of alcoholic beverages coming from their persons. I cited blank for minor in consumption. Uh, in citation, number of their officer Tisdale cited blank and blank for MIC, blank and blank, uh, respectively. All three were released to, from scene. Of, on scene. Other inter information. All three were U of I students. Follow-up needed. Undeveloped leads. No. You guys, that's just weird. First of all, where is Rosendahl's name on this thing? I don't see it anywhere except for the fact that he says that I know that he's there. You know, that, that, that he was the one. So where is his name on here? Uh, it's just beer. And they call themselves WatchGuard? We need to look that shit up. The watch guard event. Hmm. Weird. Okay, here's one of them. Love me was the cruelest thing I ever did to myself. Love me. So I don't know what the top part says. Love me was the cruelest thing I ever did to myself. I don't understand that. Oh, and this goes back, you guys, to the post. The post of the jacket that Maddie was selling. Was it Maddie? Yeah, Maddie was selling. And there was a... Uh, there was some oversized jersey or jacket that she was selling that she never got out. And the guy kept contacting her. God, I'd forgotten all about that. This wasn't it, though. You gave me hope. That was the worst of it. N.M. Sanchez. You guys know that name? You gave me hope. That was the worst of it. Hmm. Oh, so there's a ghost. You gave me hope. That was the worst of it. Where is this coming from? Like, what is this at? Where is this at? It looks like, oh, that's a bed? That's on a bed, and that's on a wall. The ghost on a wall. On a wall. What the hell? Does that look like a bed? What is this? This reminds me of. The art, the art people. And they had some really weird stuff. I should show you guys that too. Oh, so the, the chick, the, um, the one they say she's fif the 15 year old or whatever thinks is the 15. So that's who, okay. So, you, uh, you guys, okay, I'll finish reading it. Go. Okay. 
so I read, didn't I read that other part about the, oh no, okay, it looks, I, thought, I thought this looks so familiar, so a female murderer would make a lot of more sense considering no one was sexually assaulted according to the autopsy. What autopsy? That's the one confusing part about this case, not sexually motivated. You guys might be onto something. The target of three very, very pretty sorority girls by another female enraged that they got get certain attention she doesn't is a legit motive and would explain the rage behind the murder. Someone being dissatisfied with themselves, going on social media and seeing very popular and beautiful sorority girls. All of them led very ideal lives. The girls had photos of themselves with the perfect hair, the perfect bodies, vacationing on boats, and the couple was extremely popular as well. This is definitely something, hopefully, they look into this. <clears throat> I also feel like it's a girl because of personal fit of vengeful rage component. <coughs> Excuse me. And the victimology. They were all pretty popular, successful, cool, and the killer was not. Okay, jealousy could be strong motive. Now, didn't I? This is the same. Okay, that's exactly the same thing I read before. I thought that looked familiar. Also, it's like a girl because of... Per okay, that's redone too. What the hell? Okay, so is it? So is this girl Bethany and Ethan? So is this girl Bethany and Ethan? A part of me wants to think Bethan, Bethany and the other girl that lived are the murderers. I know. It's crazy, but it makes sense in a way. They would have been able to clean themselves up and what not I mean, clean themselves up and whatnot it's just a weird feeling i have um it's extremely important to not go off of feelings in cases like this i assure you it was not the two girls well they know there's also a band called the moscow slayers i found them on facebook they are a bit unsavory well that's something we can look into you guys yeah he got a new insta he get, he's got a new instagram um, I don't know if you oh is any updates on this? No updates. March sixth, the November November twelfth, donations six 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 oh okay, that's right. Cause Jack Kutkatovich was the first one to donate six dollars. Why six dollars? So March sixth, the November twelfth. Donations six dollars, six dollars, and twelve dollars was all that was there. Twelve bucks, you guys. Yes, and I did a screenshot, and I will send you more of them if you want them, whether it's on here or an email. What did they say? November 12th was the day before the murderers, not after. Can you look at your screenshots and see if it was posted the day before? Shit, you guys, and that's it. Dang. Well, I'll try to find more. Seriously, this is um, an hour and ten minutes already, so I'm going to over and out sign out at this point. All right, you guys. Well, wait a second. Let me click on one of these. Nah, I'm no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna go, okay. And if you have any questions, um, I will try to. I will save this um, uh, somewhere. <laughs> to where I don't know. I'll probably never be able to find it again. <laughs> Cause that's what happens. <laughs> oh well. Okay. Bye. Good night. There, I just forgot about. And I just remembered where I where I knew him from. Those were all um, ones that I sent to someone, and then they. They used them. Like, I got sent a, a certain person a lot. Ugh, I'm talking a lot of information, anyway. Not, it's not going to go there. But these guys, this is the art class there, right? Now, these guys, uh, let's see, which ones were there? The one on the very end, on to the right, he was at the grub truck. He was the one that was, those guys were kind of making fun of at the end. And that tall one, I'm not sure which one, it was a, it was a different guy. But anyway, this is their Facebook post. And check out this guy's backpack. Uh, red backpack kind of makes me feel weird. But, um, see, so remember that guy being there, that one on the end? It might have been the one next to him, too, that was there, but he seemed a little shorter than him. Anyway, this is their, um, their, their, um, their art that they did. This is an art project that was turned in by a student at University of Idaho. Oh, Ouch. Charging my phone on my gadgets. Grab the cord and grab my leg. Oh shit, girl. Ow, that hurt. Oh, what a little turd. Okay, so, um, this was, I don't know where, there's, they have art, so they have these galleries, and they also have these film festivals. And these film festivals are disturbing. Some of the stuff they have in here. And I've got some of that stuff too, so I just have just forgot about it until now. But this, 
That looks like a heart, right? It's possibly cut out. I'm thinking that that's like maybe the hit. I don't know. It looks like a sword or something on the side. I don't know. What do you guys think? Obviously a girl with a tank top, it looks like. But you guys remember, there was a brain left at the frat house on a freaking dumpster. You know, when Steve Fry dropped off his son Kyle Fry at the frat later that afternoon. And they pulled up and there was a what what would seem to have been a brain is what Steve said. And Steve would know. I mean, he, he works for a hospital. He works for St. Mar uh, Mary, Marie's, I think. That's St. Mary's or Marie's. I think it's Marie's. So. So this is what it means. that Because they call themselves the Deadly Six. So the Deadly Six is a medical reference to the Lethal Six. The Lethal Six, airway, obstruction, tension, new, uh, pneumonothrath, Thorax, cardiac tamponoid, pamponade, open pneumonothorax, whatever, massive hemothorax, and flail chest are immediate life-threatening injuries that, that require evaluation and treatment during primary survey. You guys, I don't, oh my god, this is just so bizarre. You know, as I'm, as I'm reading these, okay, there's Okay, here's the thing. You've got J.S., right? He lives in Queen Apartments right next door. His parents are surgeons, right? You've got Kane, who owns the Linda Lane Apartments and that and, and does and is the property manager for all of the King LLCs for Scott Green, the president's house. Um, who, who else is around there? I mean, who knows? You've got Kane, who uses Grope, G-R-O-P-P, -P, that, that, uh, uh, HVAC company who also worked on was it the, the King House right that was the one that pulled up to work on that HVAC stuff who also did is you see, there's a con there's a a receipt or whatever written out that they actually serviced um, Scott Green's house to the president but the guy that just shot up um, on the 6th that, that Thomas Adams directly across the road from him is that is that business group HVAC that's the business right next right across the street you can see it and then you've got so you got with this deadly with with what who was it that Mabbitt said that the that the that, the, that they, they wouldn't have survived like it, they weren't things that you could recover from right the wounds but there was multiple wounds prior or not I mean whatever they said it, it, she didn't say she didn't establish which was first you know, which happened first, the ones that were just meant to hurt and maim someone or the deadly ones. So this makes me think in this, why they named themselves the deadly six is because it, it's, um, uh, because they know, I mean, what is going to just cause you great pain and what is going to kill you? That's what I'm getting out of it. So Kane, I forgot to mention, okay, so Kane, Lindley, he used to work for the hospital. For, for Gritman Hospital. I mean, the hospital that's always in the freaking medical reports, you know? So he, if kn uh, known of, of this stuff, if this, you, you know, if it was known that was going on, he would have been able to, well, I don't know. The coroner says you couldn't have saved him, but who knows what anybody says anymore. I swear to God, who knows? But this seems so strange to me. Ah. Just weird. I don't know if you guys, this is a picture like one of my videos, but I don't know if any of you guys ever had really taken time to look at it. But this is from the house where, um, the pan, I'm going to say panty girl, that house right there. This is one of the bedrooms. This would, this would have been what her room was because she mentioned to the cop that she was going to get a ring camera and put it on the side of the house because at her bedroom, you, you could, you had to walk around the back to get to her bedroom is what she said. And this I'm thinking would have been her bedroom. So check this out. Check out her view. Oh, no, I'm just, I'm lying. Oh, no, 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 no. No, this is Jack and Adam's place. Oh, my God. This is the front fucking window, you guys. Oh, my God. I could have, oh, my God. I thought it was that, because that's a pantyhouse right there. Holy crap. Look at that. And Xana's room, 
looked directly to them. I mean, you can see Kaylee's bedroom perfectly. Did they, did they angle that house just for this particular thing? Um, this is just making my heart just freaking freak out right now. Oh my god, I might have to take a break. Oh my god. <sighs> Let's see what cars are over there. Can't tell. Look at there's no cars in this picture. Barely. Look at that. Well, there's one there. Doesn't look familiar. Not that I know any of the cars, but I wonder if anybody's in the window. God, you guys. Thought it was like a cop car off to the left over there. I don't see a, I don't see a ladder up against the wall there, unless it's laying down. But I don't think it is. I don't see a ladder there. What is that? Is that a is that a flagpole? That must be a flagpole right there. What? Oh no. What is? Oh, it must be like the cinch down on a cable right right here. That's weird. You guys, I'm a little freaked out. I'm a lot freaked out. Wow. So it looks like nobody's living in this right now. Are they trying to rent it, this out or what? That's just... Oh my god. My stomach. Oh, I'm seriously, I'm just, I feel sick to my stomach right now. Holy shit. Hmm. This picture right here might have to be the cover. By the way, you guys, I actually make a cover, and I do it on every one of my videos. But sometimes it just won't take. So some of my, I mean, I just some of the things that turn that they choose to put on there. I'm like, why did they choose this? I mean, it's like way far down on like the video or something that I made. I mean, it's like, wh what, what, what? Who decides that? And who decides not to use my cover photo and use something else that's in the video? Don't you think that's bizarre? I do. I do do do. Okay, so these are just some of the things that I'm just going to play on here. December 7th, Moscow, Idaho. Jack Ketovich drives the white car that police are looking for, per records and social media pics. Jack has Venmo transactions with Ethan Ch Ch Chapeland, built a name on Jack K is a frat boy and his sister has interesting posts post from that night, as in the 3.30 a.m. suspect lunch subject line for a Venmo made on November 12, 22 at 2.48 p.m. I have a feeling my phone is full of such things like this and I just don't even know it. Okay, then there's this photo. Oh, you guys. So this is from Barstool U of U Idaho. So this is one of those sites. Remember the guy with the the flame coming out of his crotch with the, the firework? So I found these things because I was looking up. I was looking. I was trying to find someone that was that uh, posted pictures of the football game that night. And man, I could not find sh nothing. I mean, nothing. So I came across um, this one, the Barstool. I think it was called Barstool. I don't. And they were just talking on that. They weren't showing anything but stuff, anything like that. But. But then there were some pictures, and I was just like, well, I'll just take, you know, a screenshot of these or whatever. And, um, this, I don't know if this was before, I don't know the, uh, the date on here, I don't know. Oh, it must have been after, must, wait. No, because the ladder's not standing up on the side. And that looks like Dylan's Jeep. But does it look like a black car right there in the driveway or black something? And yeah, the ladder's like laying down there. It's not standing up, so it had to be before. Let's see if there's anything we can see on here. It's weird. I mean, There, that car, that white car down in the middle of the screen there to the left. Kind of looks like, you know. You 
you know, that house, would, I mean, it just literally feels like it was just on display. It looks like someone on the front porch right here up by that door. Uh, what's that black car right there? Oh, look, at there's arrows pointing to it. Oh, that's weird. Oh. I'm scratching my head as in like, hmm. -mm. Sometimes I feel like a detective when I do that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> huh. That's a, what is that vehicle? Is that whole top a sun? It looks like the whole top's like a sunroof. You guys, another thing too. Okay, the SUV, the black SUV is down underneath the Linda Lane carport. They, they look very similar. And parts of that d difference video, mode video, you can see lights in that car. I'm wondering if those things uh, had surveillance in them. And so, and so since then, there's been other cars parked underneath there that are exactly the same. They're white ones. They look like undercut, like there would be undercover cop cars or some type of state cars or something like that. Um, I'll have to find those pictures. But, but yeah, this one is um, bar stool U. University of Idaho. So it's it's one there. If you just look up University of Idaho, um, just do Idaho chicks or vandal chicks, um, bar stool, whatever. They have tons of different um, different little pages like this. And one of them is, I mean, they have like men's groups, like you know, like the good old boys, like you know, the old sitting and smoking and having whatever. Uh, men's clubs, basically, is what I think they were. I don't remember that's that's what they were called back then, but gentlemen's clubs. That's what it was. Gentlemen's clubs. They called them gentlemen. My ass. Yeah, don't get me started. So these are all taken from that barstool at Idaho. And this looks like Adam. So oh, he's drink. Is he drinking a beer? What date was this? Oh, a drink with a view is the caption. Hmm. And, you know, the arrow obviously is pointing directly at the King House. At the time of the killings from Snapchat. Okay, so I just looked at Dylan's VSCO page, and she's got a photo with her boyfriend on there both wearing ski masks. The right photo is the rumored ski mask photo that apparently seemed to be around the house all the time and the killings from Snapchat. And the killings from Snapchat? Oh, so actually there was a picture I posted of like the the wall, the, the, the bedroom downstairs that had, looked like it had some Halloween costumes down there at the very end. It was when those girls were dressed, when supposedly she was picking on Dylan, they were all dressed up in these, I don't know, she looked blue, I don't know if she was a smurf, I don't know what she was, but, um, huh. I actually didn't, uh, ever read the front, of the caption of this picture, I don't think. I just read, uh, I mean, I just looked at the pictures. That sounds terrible, I can't believe I just said that. I'm not a guy, I promise. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, so I guess somebody sent this to. Okay, so see his name? He goes by um, QK Trey. Why Trey? I do not know. His name is Quinn Kelly, so QK Trey. Okay, this makes me very suspicious, and I will tell you why. First, I'm going to show you the picture. And it looks to me, and, and, and here they spelt on here, they spelled Trey wrong. He actually goes by T R E Y Trey. That's how he spells that. So to someone Q K Trey, this is him. Uh, for one, for one, that ain't me in the photo. Never even put on a ski mask. And secondly, you can see the date that V S C O photo was taken. The other photo is where I where I was that night. So he immediately posts. I, I mean, I don't know if any of this is true. I'm just showing you guys. Um. Oh, I just noticed he says Q. So he goes by QK Trey, but Q Kelly, 11. Well, it's 11 month November, huh? But how, I mean, look at how terrible that picture is. Why would he even, it, I mean, it looks like he just went and took a quick picture of something, you know, in the dark, whatever. And quite frankly, look at next to him. That looks to me like someone wearing a pink ski mask. Does it not? Look at that. 
Sure does to me. Okay, so this is Adam Lauda. Now, before he was even really, I think this, this was right after uh, what Maddie told Adam, right? And so I started looking up whoever these people were. And so he had a YouTube channel. He only had two videos on it. And they're taken down now, but I just, and I didn't know about how to screen, I didn't know I, I should screenshot all the stuff, I didn't know any of that, or I didn't have, I didn't know I could even do a screen recording, so I didn't know any about thing about that. But anyway, I screenshot them, and, um, let me see, and so when I, when I came upon them, let me see if I can find the first one. So there was this one, and there's another one, and see how he has Uber Eats up there on the top? Um... In this one video, right here, what's it, this one? Okay, I'm trying to think of how it went. November 28th, 22. Okay, so I remember he had like no views, six views. That might have been the first one. Uh, and these were all done two weeks before the murders happened, uh, both videos. So, like I said, they only had like six views. I mean... When, I mean, they didn't have hardly any. 22, I don't think, I don't even think they had any of those. But anyway, and so, of course, check this out. There's Spain right here, the, the flag stuff. Okay, so one video was him standing there in a suit, and he's, like, behind a table. He's talking to, pe to, to us face-to-face -to -face like that, right? And he's talking about he's a CEO of Uber, a CEO of Uber, and that um, he was going to Spain to open up a new Uber um, franchise over there, and he's going to call it Uber Eats. Well, later down the road, I was talking to him, Thou Shalt Not Kill. I, I, told, I had sent him a couple of emails about kind of this stuff like this. Anyway, later he came up with um, that he went to France, and that Corner Club was opening up. They were opening up a sandwich shop or something over there, something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was, but something like that. Well, I don't, I don't know where that came from. But this is what, so I don't know if Corner Club's involved with it. I don't know. I mean, all I know is that's what I heard on that, on one of his videos. Um, anyway, so Spain was what he, where Adam said he was going. So anyway, he was talking about this in this video. And so the next video was, I, I, and I don't know if it's this one where it says, Outrage over man dragged from a plane. And uh, United CEO Oscar Munez talks about exclusively to ABC. Okay, so this is the one. So in the next video, he shows, um, it must be like a paper he was doing for school or something. I'm not sure exactly what it was. But um, uh, the guy that's doing this interview, uh, let me see if I can find a... Uh, <sighs> so one thing I did do is I, I got the the, um, the uh, transcript of it. So I'll read that to you. How our differences make us stronger. That was on part of his page. Um, yeah, so look how close that was. This one was two weeks from the, the murders. Or two weeks from the Maddie. Oh, how did that work? Yeah, because after, about how, I don't know how, when did that come out, you guys? Maddie told Adam that stuff. What, when did that come out? Because this is when this was two weeks because that's when I started looking I didn't even know who Adam was prior to that so one was nine days be after that and one was two weeks after that I mean before that okay so this, let's see if I can find the oh shit it's a it's a screen um, scroll <laughs> here we go sometimes it'll back oh sometimes it's not very nice when it does this oh there we go so I think the guy's talking first, the one he's doing the interview. But what Adam is doing, he is doing a thing on body language. So he's in a, so he's watching this guy, and then he's going to take tell about talk about his body language. I think is what he was doing. Anyway, it says body language of the process of communication non-verbally through conscious or unconscious gestures and movements, and it plays a great role in how we communicate with others. Oh no, this is Adam talking. Okay, how we communicate with others. Body language helps be in a more de helps be in a more defined picture of a message that is being relayed. It can be positive or negative. 
excla exclamatory or even questioning, such as a shoulder sh shrug. It usually is displayed through mo movements, gestures, and facial expressions. Today we will examine the body language of former U.S. airline CEO Oscar Munez during an apology video with ABC. So this is actually Adam playing this video. He played the, like a little snippet of the first part of it, and then he breaks down what he thinks he's saying. Okay. Munez during an apology video with ABC News. This is an interview with Munez in response to a 2017 incident where a passenger was forcefully removed from United Aircraft. Video footage of the incident shows the passenger visibly distressed with blood rushing from his face as he was removed from the plane. Good morning and thank you for having me. Um, this is not much... This is this. It's not so much what I thought. That's what I saw here in the. It's what I saw here in the very beginning of this interview. We notice Mr. Munez's facial expression. Uh, here we, he exhibits a concerned look with his eyes, kind of closed, and his eyebrows down. And this is to match the seriousness, and show his concern for the situation. So now I play this next clip. I want you to notice the motion of Mr. Munez's head. As he explains some things about his business, as I think, as I think about our business and our people, the first thing I think is important is important to say is to apologize, so that the TED Talk, "How to Spot a Liar," it just makes no sense. He must have got an F in this. Um, <laughs> a main focal point is repetitive, is repetitive head shaking that contradicts the verbal statement. So he is uplifting his company, and so and he says the first thing you need to do is apologize but but he is shaking his head in a negative way okay so I okay I'll give him that in a negative way and this movement takes away the credibility of the message and is often related to deception or lying why did it take until Tuesday to offer a more full-hearted apology I think my first reaction to most issues is to get the facts concerned so when Asked why it took so long to offer an apology, Mr. Munez sits up and readjusts the sitting position. This type of movement indicates discomfort in a situation or the feeling of being targeted. In this next clip, I would like you to notice his head movement as he talks about some of his employees and their capabilities. We have not provided we have not provided our front line supervisors and managers and individuals with the proper tools policies, procedures that allow them to use their common sense. They have, they all have an incredible amount of common sense and this issue could have been solved by that. That's on me. I think so. The use of the, I, okay, that's on me. Okay. Let me see. How does it go? That's solved, but that's solved that. That's on me. So I think the use of the head motion in this part of the interview increases his message and emphasizes his feelings about his employees he's really trying to get his point across so he's using more emphasis on what motion and more motion in his head so he can also see you can also see him touching his chest that indicates that he's taking responsibility so those or he's having a heart attack because he's telling a lie <laughs> his heart's palpitating that's what i do i hold my chest it's like oh my god indicates the ch chest that indicates that he's taking responsibility so those are points that help and make his statements more credible so after analyzing mr munez's body language, it's evident that this is an important aspect of communication. Practicing proper and professional body language can be advent advantageous when community communicating in the business world. So this, okay, so this is all he talked about. So to me, I mean, that's, here's the thing. I was kind of set, set back by these videos because they were so weird. I mean, him standing there in a suit and talking, saying that he's a CEO of, of an Uber, of Uber. And I'm just like, okay, is he? I'm just, I'm like, I was, it seemed weird. Um, I don't know. And then this body language thing. Um, he's a dude that dresses up in the freaking ski mask, you guys. Let me show you. I mean, this is him right here with the, with this, t with whoever these are, the, this team or whatever. I mean, that's him right here. And there's, um... And he looks just like that guy. So get this. He's there's actually a comment. Oh, and this is another one. Didn't notice. Whoa. 
Okay, so this is right by the front door. So I bet you on the other side of that wall to the right, that's where the front door and entryway comes in. Because that looks like the driveway. So that one, basically, you're standing more to the left of that window. You're going to see... Look at how big that door is, you guys. Hmm. Okay, then there's these pictures. These came off of um, that of a Reddit post, but that one I think is I don't believe this one. I think that I don't think that's a real picture, but I don't know. Who knows? But these are the other pictures, um, and this is allegedly supposed to be Santa's room, and it's blocked out by the door, which is a. I think they're saying it's a body. I don't know. But this is it. They're showing the room here. But that cannot be her room because her room is not that big. And that's not where her window was. So I don't know what this is. And I just now realize that. I'm just like, that can't be. Oh. No, 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 no. This is a freaking room in Adam's house. Adam and Jack's house. That's that door, isn't it? No. But look at this. Team Idaho Real Estate and Property Management. This is the freaking one, you guys. This is the one that Kane owns. I mean, that the property man, the, the, the company, Team Management. That's Kane's company. EX Sigma Chi. Is it SX or EX? What doesn't it? Isn't it Sigma Chi or is it SX? I don't know. But that's blocked out there for a reason. There's something, allegedly, I don't know. I was trying to look in the mirror to see. That's why that blue thing's there. Oh, so they are thinking it's Kaylee's. That door doesn't have that kind of handle on it, does it? No, it doesn't. Well, anyway, now that I've gone off this total tangent... Okay, so I'm going to go back to this, this Reddit post. Okay, we're back on this Reddit post. So this, this says, This is what she posted on November 13th, 2022. Who posted? Who posted this? She? Are they talking about Dylan? So, 